Creating comics has been changing and growing over the years because now you can use 3D software such as Blender to do this type of work. In this video, we're gonna talk about how Blender can help you as a comics artist to save time and energy by working faster and smarter using its fantastic tools. The advantage of using Blender for comics. Blender is a 3D package that can help you do a lot of things and it is especially good for 3D modeling, which is why a lot of comics artists use it. In addition to that, it is free, which is great for those who work for themselves or work on a tight budget. Other than 3D modeling, Blender has a fantastic drawing tool known as the Grease Pencil that can help you do a lot of things, and of course the freestyle rendering that can bring more of a comics looks to your environments, vehicles, and so on. Not only that, because Blender is also amazing with adding specific materials, shaders, and special effects, and combining everything together to get the result you want. 3D Modeling in Blender for Comics When it comes to using 3D characters for comics using Blender, it can be done and it is sometimes a good thing because it can help you with anatomy and posing. But it can't help that much when it comes to expressing characters' emotions and feelings correctly because 3D is kinda limited and not as good compared to what you can do using 2D mediums if you wanna make something that really looks like comics characters. There are a lot of people who use 3D characters, especially who use software such as Death Studio, but often their characters kind of fall into the Uncanny Valley. If you don't know what the Uncanny Valley is, it is a concept that suggests that humanoid objects, which imperfectly resemble actual human beings, provoke uncanny or strangely familiar feelings of eeriness or repulsion in observers. Generally speaking, comics artists prefer to draw their characters, but using 3D software such as Blender, it is becoming an important 3D tool for comics artists because it allows them to create things that are very hard to do manually every time they want to draw something. For example, environments are one of the most time-consuming and repetitive things that you have to work on as a comics artist, but if you model quick environments that you need often using Blender, you will be saving yourself a lot of time and effort. Also another important thing that you should be using Blender for as a comic artist is complex machines and vehicles because usually you need to draw them from different angles and you don't want to spend 10 hours every time you want to draw your spaceship, car, tractor or complicated engines. Instead you can choose the angle that you are looking for in space and then draw over it as a result you will be working much faster with less effort. The Grease Pencil in Comics the grease pencil is a particular type of blender object that allows you to draw in 3D space. It can be used to make traditional 2D animation, cutout animation, motion graphics, or use it as a tool to create comics. Using the grease pencil, it is not possible to create comics from start to finish because it allows you to draw and sketch in the 3D viewport the way you want. You can use it to draw characters on top of other layers that you made whether it be 2D or 3D. And you can use it to draw over 3D models, especially complex ones like vehicles and machines to take it from a 3D look to a 2D comic style type of look. In addition to that, the Grease Pencil is a fantastic tool for creating motion comics because a motion comic is a form of animation combining elements of print comic books and animation. Individual panels are expanded into a full shot, while side effects, voice acting, and animation are added to the original work. Text boxes and sound effect bubbles are typically removed to feature more of the original artwork being animated, and the Grease Pencil in Blender is great for this type of work. Freestyle for Comics Freestyle is an edge or line based non-realistic rendering engine. It relies on mesh data and z-depth information to draw lines on selected edge types. Various line styles can be added to produce artistic hand-drawn, painted or technical hand line looks. There are a lot of things you can do using freestyle if you want to get a certain or specific result but for the most part, it is gonna help you transform your 3D environments that obviously look 3D into an environment that look like it was hand-drawn to a certain extent. Also, you can use modifiers and nodes to control how your work looks like. It might take time and some experience using freestyle to get to the final result you are looking for, but it is gonna be worth it in the end. So it is a process of trial and error, but the good thing is that rendering in freestyle is not gonna take a very long period of time to test different results, especially if you are using a real-time render engine such as Eevee. Lighting and rendering for comics 
Rendering comics using Blender is different from rendering realistic scenes, and one of the most important differences is the speed at which the process will be done. To create finished comics using Blender, you can actually use many different tools that the software offers. For example, you can use both Cycles and Eevee to get high quality final renders, but before that, you can use special shaders that can help you to capture the right mood or environment to have greater control and create exactly what you want. Blender versus other 3D software When creating comics using 3D software, there are a lot of options to choose from. Some of them are quick and relatively easy to use because you don't have to put in the effort from the ground up, and others give you a lot of freedom, but they also require a lot of work to get to the final result you have in mind. Usually when people make 3D comics or web comics, they usually use DAZ, Poser, Blender, or even 3D packages such as SketchUp, 3ds Max, or Maya. If you don't mind your comics looking obviously 3D, there are tons of low quality, poorly made DAZ and poster comics out there, but a lot of them can be considered bad from a comics art perspective. Usually there are a lot of recognizable characters in comics made using DAZ Studio because it comes with a bunch of pre-made stuff, and unless you are willing to put in a lot of work, you're locked into a particular aesthetic. And if you want to create something specifically for your comic, it is gonna be a little bit hard. With Blender, you can do everything from the ground up, because it is a complete 3D modeling and animation package that can be used for all sorts of different projects, not only creating comics and 2D stuff. And it will be letting you have everything exactly the way you want it to be. When using Blender, you can start out with a vision of what your character will be looking like, and then go and make the character. When using DAS, for example, you can start out with a vision of the character, then look for resources that are close to what you want, and then adjust the way you envision the final result to work with the resources and the constraints of the program. And this is one of the main reasons why many comics artists prefer Blender, because many of them don't want to be limited by the available resources. You can buy new models that come close to what you want, but it is not going to be even close to creating your own stuff that you envision in your mind. Artists are usually creative people who don't want to be limited by the tools and they want things to look exactly the way they see them in their minds. A creative artist can only live with the limit or constraint that is only based on his or her talent, or lack thereof, rather than external factors, due to the fact that this is something they have control over if they work harder and improve their skills. Using Blender if you don't have the skill to pull something off, you can always get better, but using other software such as Death Studio, if you're locked off with a preset and need to adjust them and tweak them, there is very little to get around that. The difference of freedom of control and creativity becomes very apparent when working on something that is not very common, like working on fantasy or sci-fi comics. You will definitely need to have robots, creatures, aliens, strange environments, and so on. And there is pretty much little chances that you will find something similar in that studio because resources are gonna be limited to a certain extent. But if you are working with Blender, you can always just make that creature or specific environment from the ground up and you can build those fantasy or sci-fi environments how you want them to be, rather than having to use existing things and tweaking them to look similar to what you envision. Is it cheating to create comics using 3D? For some, this is actually a really good question, because this is a topic that surfaces from time to time within the comic art community. Drawing is one of the most artistic skills to hone, especially drawing for comic books. It takes years of constant dedication, learning, and practice to get a handle on the fundamentals. Most artists are in it for the long haul, and their passion to create gives them the motivation to stick with it, and in turn get better at drawing. But we all know that time is money, and artists in the comic book industry are usually torn between quantity and quality. But you can cut massive chunks of your workflow out of the entire drawing process so that you can skip further ahead in less time. That might mean using references, it also might mean tracing, or use 3D models to help you save time and effort. I think as long as you are being a creative artist who produces art that is true to his principles and the field that he is working in, it does not hurt to adopt new tools and technologies that help you make things easier, faster, and generate even better results. If you find Blender to be a useful asset for your projects, by all means use it and save time and energy to work on even more amazing projects. I hope you found this video useful and informative. 
if you have something to add you can leave it in the comment section below also you can check some of our previous videos thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one